buyers of top luxury convertible sports cars who find Ferraris and Lamborghinis too extrovert, Aston Martins and Jaguars too stuffy, and offerings from BMW and Mercedes-Benz too clinical, have an alternative that blends beauty with performance and class. This Grand Cabrio is a fine demonstration of where the Maserati brand is going in the modern era and makes a better job than almost any other rival of combining four-seat cabin space with sports car handling. Add gorgeous looks and an illustrious brand heritage and it's a tempting proposition. So the time has come to reward yourself with a really desirable six-figure sports car. Something with an open top, a classic badge, and an engine to die for. We're talking a step above the German premium brands here. After all, you can feel proud to have a Cabriolet, Mercedes, or Audi in the driveway, but your choice won't stop the traffic. Here's a car that will. Maserati's Gran Cabrio. It's a rather unique choice, too. In the luxury convertible class, hardly any of the options on offer uh, have proper rear seat space for a couple of adults. And those that do, Bentleys and BMWs, are anything but cutting edge sports cars. This Italian, in contrast, claims to offer everything. A Ferrari engine note, sharp handling, and space in the rear for a couple of fortunate friends to share the experience with you. What could be better? Before this Gran Cabrio model arrived in 2010, the open top version of Maserati's Gran Turismo Coupe, the company's Viale Ciro Minotti factory had never before produced a four-seater convertible, despite a long history of open top sports cars stretching all the way back to the A6G through a Spider of 1950. Today, the brand sees that extra carrying capacity as essential, one of the things that differentiates its sports cars from those of Ferrari, Jaguar and Aston Martin. What are the others? Let's find out. A drive in a Maserati is an event, in a way that a trip in a rival Jaguar XK, Mercedes SL or BMW 6 Series can never be. If you petrol running through your veins, just clasping the key fob sets your heart beating a little faster as you settle yourself in the low set seat and peer at those evocative dials through the thickly rimmed three spoke steering wheel. And even if you're impervious to all of this, you won't be after firing the 4.7 litre V8. A glorious burbly roar that sounds like nothing else. But now to the problem. Lopping the top off a luxury sports coupe to create a convertible also creates an enormous problem of structural rigidity. Now building in the strengthening necessary to sort this out also means building in weight, the enemy of a lithe, agile sports car, which leads to one of two results. Either the designers restrict the size of the rear passenger compartment, thereby restricting the size of the open space they have to compensate for, so you end up with something like an Aston Martin Vantage Roadster, or they give in to the weight, billing their car as a luxury GT, hoping that a set of adjustable dampers will return some of the sharpness that's been lost. Step forward, BMW 6 Series convertible. Now I'm telling you this to give you some idea of the scale of the claim that Maserati is making by suggesting that this car can comfortably seat four adults, yet still offer cut and thrust sports car handling. So, have they managed it? Well, things get off to a good start with the news that yes, there are four proper seats and that the Cabrio conversion has added just 100 kilograms to the overall weight. Not so good is the news that in the absence of Aston Martin style aluminium panels, the bulk of this car was already so portly that this change takes the real world weight to over two tons. One reason why this 4.7 litre Cabrio is actually slower than a, uh, an equivalent 4.2 litre coupe model. So it's a rather large car and feels it on narrower country roads. You certainly can't throw this thing about in the way that you would an Aston Vantage Roadster or a Porsche 911 Cabrio. But then if you are using the rear seats, you probably won't want to be doing that anyway. If you do want to do that, 
then Maserati's Skyhook Adaptive Damping System is standard, accessible via this sport button that firms up the suspension as you trade ride comfort for improved body control. Now the result won't be a car you'll be wanting to take on too many track days, but it is a far, far better driver's machine than the only other proper four-seat luxury sports convertibles I can think of in this segment. The BMW 6 Series convertible that would cost you a bit less and the Bentley Continental GTC that would cost you a lot more. I should also explain that pressing the sport button doesn't only firm up the dampers. At the same time, gear shift times from the automatic gearbox that all Grand Cabrio models must have are quickened. And best of all, beyond 3000 RPM, the uh, flaps and the exhaust are open to release more of that marvellous music. Now with all this in place, uh, rest to 62 miles an hour can be dispatched in just uh, 5.4 seconds. That's in the standard 440 brake horsepower model that I've got here. There is also um, a sport version which gives you an extra 10 brake horsepower, stiffer springs and anti-roll bars and a more focused version of the Skyhook adaptive damping system. Now this variant isn't much faster but it is a lot sharper and sounds even better. Now both models struggle a little more in the mid-range against rivals with greater torque but all that means is that you have to make uh, the uh, V8 engine work a little harder and make more use of the gear shift paddles with their lovely click clack action which is hardly a hardship especially when every down change makes you sound like Fernando Alonso. This you see is a car you have to drive. No trick four-wheel drive or active steering systems, dual clutch gearboxes, ceramic brakes or multiple turbo engines. Just a good old-fashioned rear-driven V8. And uh, if you have a wide expanse of test track, you can disable the MSP stability control and really relive your Formula One dreams. If you have a private airfield, top speed is 175 miles an hour, at which point you'll be glad of the large Brembo brakes. There's a story that Henry Ford II, one time head of the Ford Motor Company, used to lark around in a Maserati Ghibli Spider. Now naturally he was questioned as to why he, the head of one of the largest uh, motor companies in the world, would do such a thing. When my engineers build me a car as beautiful as this one, came his reply, then I'll put this away in the garage. A Maserati, particularly a Maserati convertible, has always been a thing of beauty and nothing has changed with this Pininfarina penned Gran Cabrio. In accommodating that enormous V8 engine and these adult usable rear pews, this was always going to be a very long car at five meters lengthier even than Bentley's huge Continental GTC. And while the pretty shape doesn't disguise these proportions, it does present them very favorably. In this, Pininfarina was helped by the decision partway through the development process to ditch plans for a Mercedes SL style metal folding roof that would have delivered a cramped, heavier and much uglier result. So we have instead this triple layered canvas top that takes a leisurely 28 seconds to raise or lower but can at least be operated at speeds of up to 19 miles an hour either by a switch in the cabin or if you so desire by a button on the key fob. So should you be over the road from your Grand Cabrio sipping a cappuccino when a downpour begins you can effortlessly raise its roof. Now using a soft top has made this car more aerodynamic and retained its low center of gravity and optimum weight distribution. What it hasn't done, rather disappointingly, given the possible needs of up to four occupants, is given it a decently sized luggage bay. In trying to retain the torsional rigidity to enable sporty handling, the designers have had to incorporate a torsion wall in the boot with disastrous spatial consequences. Luggage room falling from the 260 litres you get in the Gran Turismo Coupe to just 173 litres here. You can't fold down the rear seat backs to increase it either, uh, but in compensation your dealer will try and sell you trolley suitcases that fix onto the rear seat bases under a security belt. Otherwise the only option available to owners is to invest in a bespoke fit 
four-piece luggage set at over three and a half thousand pounds to make the most of what they have. All of which means that if you are taking a couple of rear seat passengers on your grand cabrio adventure, then they'd better be the understanding sort, happy to travel pretty light. Some forbearance on their part would also be necessary once a seat has been taken in the rear. Now, as advertised, it's perfectly true that there is an impressive amount of backseat legroom for a cabriolet of this sort. What the brochure doesn't tell you though is that these rear seats have been moved inwards, restricting elbow room, and worse, upwards, um, limiting headspace when the roof is up and subjecting rear seat occupants to buffeting when it's down. For short to medium length journeys though, these rear chairs will be perfectly uh, adequate for most adults, which is an achievement in itself for this class of car. There are no buffeting issues for those up front, especially if they're traveling two up and have paid extra for the rear wind deflector that reduces this by 70%. Now that's the kind of refinement you're gonna need if you're thinking of traveling al fresco on colder days, because to be frank, the heater isn't especially powerful, nor can it be supplanted by the kind of air scarf type arrangement you find on some cheaper cabrios, where hot air is funneled up to your neck. Otherwise though, the cabin does a reasonable job of justifying its 100,000 pound price tag, even if the dash is rather too over speckled with buttons in an age when many other rivals have iDrive style center controllers. You can't help admiring the uh, hand-stitched poltrona frau leather though. Now you're going to need a six-figure budget to own a Maserati Grand Cabrio, but only just. Prices sit at around the £100,000 mark, and that means a premium of around £10,000 over a comparable Maserati Gran Turismo Coupe model. If you want the sport variant, with its uh, stiffer springs and anti-roll bar, more focused skyhook suspension, and extra 10 brake horsepower, then you need to budget another £4,500 over the cost of this standard model. Now, uh, you could save around £20,000 over this Maserati and buy a comparable BMW 6 Series convertible or Mercedes SL, but what price exclusivity? You could, after all, park one of these alongside any Lamborghini or Ferrari without loss of face. And for similar exclusivity, you'd need to pay at least £30,000 more for something like a Bentley Continental GTC. Whichever Grand Cabrio model you choose, this standard 440 brake horsepower model or the sharper 450 brake horsepower sport variant, power comes from essentially the same 4.7 litre V8 petrol engine. Now it's controlled via a seven speed gearbox that you access via steering wheel paddles. With the exception of the wind deflector that really should be standard, uh, the kit list includes most of what you'd expect a £100,000 budget to give you, including gorgeous Portrana Frau leather, 20 inch alloy wheels, parking sensors, a Maserati multimedia system with integrated satellite navigation, a six speaker stereo and bi-xenon headlamps. Plus of course there are an enormous number of ways in which you can personalise your car, not only with a choice of different paint shades, but also with a choice of colours for the fabric hood and a, a whole range of different interior trim finishes ranging from dark chrome to moonwood, whatever that is. Unfortunately, as you might be expecting, a lot of this optionality costs extra, and that's way before you start looking at the frighteningly long options list. Even just dipping into it and ticking uh, a few typical boxes of nice to have options, say things like uh, painted brake calipers, uh, a space saver rear wheel, a two-tone interior, wood trim, uh, an upgraded Bose stereo, a bespoke luggage set and an iPod connector. Well, that lot would up the asking price by over £20,000. Though you can't specify ceramic brakes, the standard Brembo items should resist all but the hardest track use. And there's a decent quota of standard safety equipment, running to Isofix child seat fixings, six airbags, and the usual roster of electronic aids for braking, traction, and stability control to hopefully ensure you'll never have to use them. 
and if the worst should happen, in the event of a rollover, a telescopic anti-roll bar system will shoot out from behind the rear head restraints here, if necessary punching through the rear glass to protect you in just 190 milliseconds. At some point, Maserati will have to start getting serious about efficiency and begin thinking about stop-start systems and hybrid power. Clearly though, that point hasn't yet arrived, so we still have here a 4.7 litre V8 chugging out 354 grams per kilometre of CO2 and averaging just over 18 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. In theory, uh, with a spell of light-footed use, you could get that figure up to 25 miles to the gallon or so, but if you indulge in that kind of motoring too often, then you rather uh, defeat the point of buying this car in the first place. Now, if all that bothers your green-minded neighbours and you care what they think, why? Uh, the, you could uh, salve your environmental conscience by planting a hectare or two of forest in your back garden. Insurance is, of course, a top-of-the-shop Group 50. Many will buy this car simply because it's a Maserati and because it looks drop-dead gorgeous. The difference though with this Trident badge brand in the modern era is that its products also stack up on more sensible grounds. Yes, many will point out that it's vastly more expensive than obvious rivals, but it's also true to say that most actual Maserati buyers wouldn't regard a, a BMW 6 Series, a Jaguar XK or even a Mercedes SL as an obvious rival. These, they would say, are merely cars that you buy if you can't quite afford a Grand Cabrio. If you can, and you want the option of carrying two adult-sized rear passengers in something still describable as a proper sports car, then it's hard to think of a better choice, though you'll have to take the tiny boot into account before thinking of too much Grand Touring. In the end, there are, it's true, faster and more exclusive ways of rewarding yourself for a lifetime's toil than this. But few of the other really classically badged open-top luxury sports cars you could choose are as practical and all cost a lot more. So while buying a Grand Cabrio will always be a grand gesture, it's also one you could justify to yourself. Not that you should have to. To its owners, this car will always be beauty and the best, which will be all that matters. <laughs>